live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to Vegas. It's theCUBE, live from AWS reInvent 19. Lisa Martin here with John Walls. And John, we've been hanging out with about 65,000 folks or so. Just our best friends. Yeah. Uh, but, but we, and we talked about this just a, a little bit ago, but I really am impressed again with the, the kind of this continued energy and uh, focus. And you know it's going to go well beyond this show, but three days of back to back to back, great presentations, great programming. Obviously the show floor is still jam-packed, so really good show, hats it, off to AWS. Absolutely, you're right, the energy has not wavered one bit, and, <laughs> and oftentimes by day three, that can no. be a challenge. So there's so much excitement. Not, not out here. <laughs> not in Vegas. John and I are pleased to welcome a couple of guests to theCUBE. To my left, we've got Jen Doyle, the VP of Operations from One Strategy, and Ricardo Madan, VP of Technology Products and Services. How about that? From Texas, since I got two thumbs up. All right, <laughs> good. He gave me carte blanche on how to pronounce that, by the way. So guys, One Strategy and Tech Systems. Jen, let's start with you. Give our audience an understanding of One Strategy, what you guys are, what you deliver. Yeah, so we are a AWS Born in the Cloud dedicated partner of, uh, for Amazon Web Services. We are a premier consulting partner who focuses exclusively on delivering to our customers high quality AWS expertise. And that across industries? Yeah, so because uh, we're exclusively in the AWS, it's across industries and pretty agnostics for customer size and scale. Uh, so we have that unique capability to really dive deep on being the experts on the AWS when our customers are the experts of their own business. Awesome, and tech systems? So tech systems, global services, we are a full stack technology consulting, professional services, uh, GSI global system integrator, uh, and we, we really pay attention to that term full stack because we cover every facet of the software systems, operation, dev life cycle, but increasingly in the last couple years, what has been the, the heart and soul of our ecosystem of competencies and practices and, and, and capabilities has been cloud. And even more so has been AWS, which is you know, one of the reasons that we're super excited about coming together with one strategy. Well, cloud, you know, obviously it, it's not, you know, it's, it's not a thing, it's the thing, yeah. now, right? Um, so, so we've kind of moved that past that. When, when people come to you or clients come to you and they want to understand about this cloud experience, especially if they're, if they're native cloud, right? They're not, they're not a legacy, they're not bringing stuff over, but they're going to, they want to launch. What's kind of the checklist, the, the preliminary, or that elementary look that you do to assess what their needs are, what their, well, I guess what their opportunities are, and kind of how you get them to start thinking about exactly what they want to get done. Because I assume it's, it's, a, it's a big shoulder hunch and a lot of questions about where do we go from here. So how do you get them to, I guess, orient them toward that conversation and that discussion? Yeah, so a lot of the way, good place to start is just to really understand their business. Uh, right now, it's no longer just a IT side of the house kind of discussion, it's a whole business. And so our first step is really to dive deep and understand their business goals, their culture, and what their actual end goal is going to be. And so we have a really great program that we partner with AWS called the AWS Well Architected Review Program, which we were really fortunate to be one of the top initial partners selected for the beta program a few years ago, and then a launch partner for them when they went public a couple, last year. Uh, to really dive deep and uh, be able to figure out exactly what are they doing, what do they want to be doing, and how to get there, both on scale, vertically and horizontally, how to cost save, and how to really make sure when they're doing it, they're doing it in a secure fashion. And where are those conversations happening? Are they happening at the IT level, or is it really up, as Andy Jassy was talking about Tuesday, these types of transformations have to come from the executive senior level. Are you having those conversations with the heads of business? Yeah, we've really been seeing that kind of transformation and it's been phenomenal where that change in culture is no longer just the IT side of the house. It is senior leadership. Like Andy Jassy said, it's now a holistic business approach where you need that alignment in the senior leadership down and that uh, inclusivity in that kind of part. And a lot of our conversations, you're getting everybody really buying into the AWS cloud initiatives that are going on. And Rick, keep me honest, I know on your yeah, side yeah, as yeah. well, tech is experiencing a lot of that same thing. Indeed, and the, the, the way to kind of 
I, I guess, divide and, and conquer the, the vectors from where we lean in to you know, handle those conversations and prioritize the needs and, and even deal with the different audiences, Lisa, like you're talking about, because like enterprise IT owners and business owners, Ultimately, they care about making the business better, but they're approaching it from, from different lenses. And in AWS language, there's a methodology and a mindset called working backwards. And it, and it really is the process of beginning with those goals, those business goals that Jen talked about and framing them up to super tight. Before we talk about how many lines of code or how many servers are going to be, you know, we don't want to even get into that until we've got that really good fluent understanding of the quantified needs and, and how to really kind of celebrate what that is and then work backwards from there. The, the converse, because it's such an all-encompassing conversation, um, especially with, with enterprises that are nascent to the cloud, they've only dipped their toe in the water, kind of like what, what Andy was, was talking about during his keynote a couple days ago, uh, our specific methodology under working backwards, we break it up into two pieces. Uh, one is called think big and one is called act now. And Act Now, starting from there, is, is usually for the folks, and that's like the, the technology solution. They're fluent enough, they're lucid enough in what their business is going to get out of cloud and out of a migration and out of native development, all that good stuff. So we can kind of go right surgically into, hey, how do we just make you better based on our combined expertise and our experience? Um, think big is a little bit more involved, kind of to, to where the, uh, the, the question was going, because you're thinking about OCM, organizational change management, and you know, how does that culture really instantiate itself to move fast and be agile and think in a lean way, and oh, repurpose lots of skills and lots of roles that kind of go extinct after a while. So how do we take you know, all this great talent inside an, an organization and upskill them and next-gen them to really operate inside of this new cloud ecosystem? So, excuse me, Lisa. So, I mean, you're talking about really organizationally this, this leadership culture change or shift, if you will, taking ownership of it from the very top. Uh, how do you characterize maybe what that mindset looks like today as opposed to maybe four or five years ago? It's so easy to put it over, you know, let's just throw it over to the IT guys and developers and, and we're going to yeah. focus on our marketing and our sales and we're going to do all that. It, it, you know, the, the, the C-suite is, there, right? They're yep. much more present in these kind of discussions. You, ha you have to have that, do you not? Yeah. To, to drive that kind of fundamental change. For sure, I think a lot of it has to do with the accessibility that AWS Cloud is really bringing to the industry, where it's now in such a easily uh, integrating way into your entire business. It's C-level, as you say, down to the interns, can have that same accessibility using that toolbox that AWS allows for them to really jump in hands first and start making uh, things right away. You can be spinning up instances within seconds. It's so simple for people at all levels of knowledge. It's not just the 20 years of IT that can be the only ones to understand what's going on anymore. What are some of the barriers that AWS and cloud are, have removed that five, 10 years ago, customers were concerned with ABC that now those barriers have been mitigated. There might be new barriers, but what are some of the, the evolution that you've seen AWS really sort of fuel? So that, we, we could even think back to some of what, what John, you were talking about. The, the kind of erstwhile mindset was a very big iron one. Uh, you didn't really look at, at technology and IT as a, anything more than a utility. Uh, now it's a competitive advantage. Now, now you have to, that's why you know you have this whole concept of being a digital native and digital transformation, all these big words that, that get so much airtime, but that, that's really been an acceptance and an adoption that technology has gotten to the point where we are moving quicker, better, faster as a function of celebrating CX. Uh, customer experience and enhancing it and using technology to really make organizations move quicker, move faster, or adopt new features into whatever their product set is, whether it's online or whether it's packaged, whatever. And it's So I think those barriers that, that AWS has, has really kind of bubbled up to the surface and then sifted <laughs> off has been that integration into the business. And that that is, that's been a transformation that no other company has, has really enabled outside of AWS. For years, think about like Gartner and Forrester and IDC, they would talk about the number one objective for IT is to be aligned with the business, but always in like a subservient role. Right. Now it's more of a foot forward and a leadership role that you see inside of these organizations. Yeah, it used to be, oh, those are the IT guys. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Hey, those Afterthought. are the IT guys, right? Yeah. I mean, the whole, the whole thing's changed. Well, go, if you look forward then, um, when, when you sit down with whomever, 
and you're trying to walk them through you know, their process and get them to evaluate like what their needs are and so on and so forth. What's the biggest hurdle you got to get over with them? You know, with, with somebody to say, you've got to be, you got to be totally present. This is your, what your IT offering should be. You should be cloud or whether you're hybrid, multi, whatever you might be, but you got to be cloud. What's the big challenge there, you think, to really get somebody to jump into that deep end? Honestly, I would really say it's the culture change. Right now, it's been such a huge digital transformation. You can't deny that. Right. But the culture transformation that's going along with that has really been phenomenal. And that's a lot of the people who are at that point of starting their cloud journey are starting to realize they have to change the way that they look at everything. It as you've mentioned several times, it's not just the technical side anymore. It is the business side. And that's the big cultural shift of getting over that. There's a lot of technical debt in there with all the on-prem and different areas that people have invested in. And honestly, right now, the day of lift and shift is, gonna, is kind of going away. It's all of the new cloud benefits, like serverless and containers, it's really going to be revolutionary, but that education and enablement really needs to be more prevalent in everybody's vocabulary and not just that IT guy who can tell you about it, it needs to be the C-level, the enablers, the stakeholders in the middle that really understand what's going on. So can you talk to us about one strategy in tech systems coming together? Tell us a little bit about that, what you're doing together and how you might be an enabler of that cultural transformation that is absolutely linchpin. So there's, um that, that enabler uh, and that accelerator to, to kind of that, that change, and not to overuse the word accelerator, but that, that's just kind of one vector that, that we can talk about a little bit. And it's really what we're encouraging our, our customers to look at, because they've got a, a, a broad choice of, of SIs, of system integrators like us, but if you're not coming to the table with real depth of expertise, uh, depth of expertise that can help mute a lot of the complexity that, that we're alluding to, because even, even though we've got so many benefits and so much growth happening inside the, the AWS world, there's 175 services today. Uh, there have been 2,500 feature updates, releases across that portfolio just this year alone. There's five to 10 new announcements a day. And then outside of the, the AWS stack, you've got hundreds and hundreds of other uh, members of the DevOps tool chain that get bolted into that, so that you know the the way that we're kind of getting customers to overcome some of that reticence is by muting a lot of that, simplifying it, and coming to the table with real accelerators where we've invested collectively uh, hundreds of thousands of lines of of code that that we've built and put together for AWS proprietary tools for better adoption, whether it's database freedom and getting like kick-started you know, off of your legacy oppressed database environments and into the, the purpose-built uh, platforms inside of AWS, whether it's uh, microservices, libraries, and, and frameworks that, that we built for customers to help them start to decompose some of those, those big, expensive, uh, you know, high technical debt applications that, that Jen was talking about into microservices to containerize, to make them run faster in the cloud. So that, that's, you know, that, that's where, we're, where we're leaning in from, uh, not just with the expertise and the, the, you know, the combined resume of hundreds of awesome engagements that, that we've moved customers to the cloud in and hundreds and hundreds of terabytes that, that, that we've moved, but it's, it's doing it in a way where the customer knows that they've got a, a real leader here with them side by side in the journey. And it doesn't happen in one or two conversations. I mean, th this is going on ac across you know, many different settings and demos and you know, think big sessions like, like we were talking about. So it, it, takes, it takes some time. Yeah, I mean, the, I think the combined family of tech systems in one strategy will really be phenomenal for our customers. 48% of the market right now is using AWS Cloud. And yeah. to keep up with that scale of innovation and growth, just to be able to do that, businesses need AWS experts, and that's who we are. It's in our name, our, we have one focus, one strategy, and that's AWS. We are developed based on the same agile, lean leadership principles that AWS has, and with the several competencies that we have, such as our data and analytics, machine learning, DevOps, migration, we have a proven track record of not only being the AWS experts, but being able to be agile and grow with that same uh, speed that AWS ours to keep up with the training our teams on that expertise. And I think with tech systems, global footprint, and ability to find these amazing talent, 
combined with our skill set, we will be able to create a larger geographical footprint to deliver to our customers in a way that they will not only see our ability to deliver what they're doing, but exceed their expectations. I imagine the amount of engagements that you're going to have after an event like this, three days, you mentioned there are up to 175 services that AWS is no. delivering. The volume of announcements, it's incredibly challenging to keep up with it, plus there's 2,500 sessions that you know, customers can't go to that many. So I imagine there's going to be a lot of leaning on one strategy and tech systems to say, help us deconstruct, you know, deconstruct this, digest all the opportunities here. So Definitely. you guys are, are, I'm sure, going to be very busy after this event, but we thank you yeah, for joining John and me today and telling us what you guys are doing individually and now collectively together. We appreciate it. Well, thank you, Lisa. Thank you thank so you much for your time as well. Oh, our pleasure. For John Walls, we're out, Vegas baby. This has been theCUBE. This is the end of our third day of continuous coverage of lots of stuff going oh, on great. at AWS reInvent. John, it's been a blast hosting a few segments with you. As always. Nice job. Yeah, good. We'll see you next time. Thanks for having me. All right, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.